broadcast media specifically was going to be something that would really help our university. We were instrumental in actually getting a lot of these students opportunities. That's what caught me, you know, excited about the class. It's always nice to see from the other perspective, to be able to be on the other side of the camera. See, it was the, one of the only classes that offered some sort of television experience. In this area, there's not a lot of other opportunities for news programs to get experience, so I think it gives all of us a insight early on to see if that's something we would like to continue to move forward with in the future, and I think that's something that is very beneficial for this community. There are markets in this country that are a third the size of what we are, and they've got their own television stations, they've got their own outlets. We don't, because again, uh, we're covered by Los Angeles. We're, we're smothered by them. Um, we're an umbrella market, so the only time they really focus out here is when we have an explosion or terror shooting or something bad. So what, what our students are doing is they're producing stories that are about the community, about other things that are going on, and really shining a good light on what's the Inland Empire. Cause sometimes it gets a bad rap out here. But we didn't really like, we hadn't found a name yet. And uh, Maureen Barley, she was one of our first anchors. She was also one of my student assistants. So she was sitting in my office and she goes, yeah, she, we're talking about names. She goes, well, I, I really think that, um, you know, our show is about local matters. And I went, that's it. We're gonna start real quick with the syllabus, get this out of the way. Basically this course is credit, no, no credit. So you either pass or you don't. Today, the tone usually, I call it shaking the tree. I just kind of try to scare you guys a little bit because I don't want any flakes in the class. So if you hear anything, today that you want to do, and make sure you drop, okay? There's going to be some outside work you're going to have to do, um, shooting stories in the field, and we're going to show you how to do everything you need to do in here. So, you're going to need to produce, which includes writing and shooting a minimum of two stories this quarter. In early 2007, we were approached by Michael Ross from, then it was called ACM. They were contacted by Charter Cable saying they were looking for students to produce a local content for Charter's HLN. Uh, the university had a relationship with uh, Charter Communications and so through that I was able to meet uh, Tom Thompson who was the Vice President of Charter Regional at the time. And one day he gave me a call and said, we have a program. It was called 2454, which is 24 minutes after the hour and 54 minutes after the hour. Um, we would have a local cut in and so that would be us. So four minutes would be, would be our content that the students produce. We talked about it and I thought about it and I thought, well, that's, you know, uh, that's a lot of production. It's a daily thing. It was only a four minute um, segment daily though. And they had the production class that they were offering. Um, and so we, we sat down and thought it through and figured that we could use the students in the production class for this. And at the time, um, we wanted to do it, and they said basically, if you guys don't want to do it, we're going to approach other schools. I, I, I didn't think we were quite ready to go, but I also felt that if we didn't take this opportunity at that moment, that we would lose it to somebody else. That they would go to Valley College, or they go to UCR, or they would go to somebody else, and we would miss this opportunity. The whole broadcast media was something new at Cal State, so there was a, a lot of excitement around it, and the kids were all excited to do it, and I think everyone learned a lot. We talked about maybe creating another course, or doing a club, or something like that. The fastest way to do it was to use the class that was already in place, which was our practicum course. So we revamped the practicum course to produce the show. That's how it started. News is a way to inform the public of what's going on. It's like being a storyteller and trying to get the story. It's a journalistic approach. It's a way to open people's eyes. When it happened and why it happened. It's a great source of information for us as a society to watch our progress. News sort of harnesses all of us together as a community. It makes us all feel like we're kind of the same or not so different after all. Every hour, with 24 hours a day, at the 54th minute of each hour, this program would come on. The students were excited when they first found out about this, but I don't think a lot of them realized how much work was involved in it. And then working with Charter, um, we had to do five shows a week. Five, every week. Okay, five times two, that's 10 stories a week. If you think about that, that's a lot of stories to do. Uh, the idea was to send the students out and do uh, one and a half minute segments and during the week 
and then one day at the end of the week we'd get together, we'd shoot on, uh, at the sound stage and we added all that in. Putting that together and experimenting with that the first year. Well the struggles we ran into were probably not so much uh, technical really, I mean we didn't have all the stuff so we kind of made do but it was more of a learning experience, things that we didn't know. Uh, getting, the, getting the stuff done, the tapes done, and getting them to charter on time, that was often a struggle. I remember one of the first things, we, one of the first things that happened was uh, we got uh, an email from a viewer who was just slamming the production values and just slamming us, and I just, you know. So I, so I wrote him back and I, I kind of gave him the proper context with which to understand what we were doing. And, um, and then he wrote back and he, and he said he understood. It, it, it could have been good constructive criticism, but it was his tone and the way he talked, the way he, the tone of his email that really irked me. So that was one of the first things I, I, <laughs> I remember doing after this thing got up and running. Uh, but after that, everything settled down and um, uh, we, got, we, get, we got better at it. Um, uh, we, we got better with, uh, um, in all kinds of uh, ways. Six, five, the one. four, one zoom in. three, two, open mic, one, two times. From California State University, San Bernardino, it's Local Matters. You throw to the first segment. Hello, I'm Josue Howdy, and welcome to Local Matters, featuring stories from across the Inland Empire. And I'm Destiny Guzman. Coyote Advertising is a marketing You come back, you throw the second center. Dream Centers have been established on five different CSU campuses to promote diversity and the inclusion of undocumented students. Reporter Anaisa Moreno-Gonzalez finds out how the centers are creating awareness and support. So it gives us just enough time to cover a couple things and, and give the right exposure to the community. My first story, I chose to do it on Native American powwows. I remember pitching it to Ryan because we were in groups and when I told him that that's what the story I wanted to do and he he was very interested he said oh, yes that sounds very good and he asked me what Anglo was going to take and I said just embracing the community and bringing the community together and he said no yeah, that was good so I was glad that was my first story I'm a little nervous yes but I'm excited and I can't wait to do it I feel exciting. Let's see how this works out. So when we first got there, there was another um, person who was Native American and he came up to us and said, oh, well, I hope you, you're not shooting that. And because that wasn't supposed to be filmed. Well, I had told him, oh, well, we got approval. And he's like, yeah, that's fine, but you just didn't get that. And we didn't. We kind of ran to a little bump in the road there, but not really, because then he ended up actually helping us trying to find the head tribesman. And so he was very helpful. What I thought I was going to do uh, would be to get the interviews first, so that way I can have something better to do my intro and outros, but they were still busy, so I had to do my intro and outros first. So I had an idea of what I wanted, but I didn't have, any, I didn't have anything solid down. So it was kind of difficult for me, because you have to memorize it right then and there. So Native American powwows are held throughout the year. They are very significant in Native American culture, and they bring within a Native American culture. So what makes up a powwow? Today, no, see, I don't know. Native American culture. They bring the community together. No, they bring the community and the tribe together. So what makes up a Native? No. So I was practicing, it wasn't too bad. I think I did, yeah, a couple shots, but it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. So it was good. Native American powwows are held throughout the year. They allow the culture to thrive while bringing the community together. While valuing both Native American culture and community, these gatherings definitely show the importance of coming together. For local matters... It does require a lot of planning. It does require time. It requires you to think about what questions you're, you want to ask. and you, It helps, too, to get a visual of what you want. It was a great learning experience, definitely, I'd say. Gosh, I like that. But yeah, you're, the way you're zooming out, cool. That was how you're walking. Yeah, Many cool. of the students who have left here and walked right into to jobs have benefited uh, greatly from the local matters experience, right? Because it just gives them another venue, another avenue, another way, another space for telling a story in a certain, you know, in a, within a certain time constraint. Regardless of genre, you're still working with um, 
the aesthetics of the medium, you're still working with the storytelling elements of the medium. You're still thinking about composition, you're still thinking about lighting, you're still thinking about lens focal lengths, you're still thinking about sound, you're still thinking about how you're going to shoot this to edit. Uh, all of those things uh, bode well, regardless of whether you're doing news or community affairs programming or fiction film or experimental film or whatever, um, those, uh, those skills, those uh, aesthetic sensibilities all serve a great place to hone one's skills as a videographer, as an editor, as a live uh, multi-camera director. Yeah, it was a, you know, overall it was a great experience for me, something new and something that uh, I feel is important at a university is that we're all learning and to give that opportunity to people and for me to learn as well, uh, I thought it was, it was a great program all around. Before, if students wanted this type of experience, they had to, to internship or drive to LA or somewhere else. And even if they did that, they'd just be making copies and pouring coffee. Um, so this really gives them a good hands-on tool to do that. Uh, real world experience, um, so it's very important. Um, yeah, there isn't a whole lot of opportunity in the IE. I mean, it's not like, you know, television stations aren't like banks or churches around every corner, but uh, this really gave them their own show that they could put their heart and soul into, because it is a student-created show, a produced show. The fact that it is still going on after about, after 10 years, shows you uh, the benefit of it. A lot of our, um, a lot of our on-air talent have uh, gone straight from this, from local matters into real world uh, positions. As far as professionalism and, and learning how to get put together news stories, there are so many different elements, you know. So with Local Matters, I learned how to set up an interview, conduct an interview, shoot an interview, and then put together that interview in a package and, and create something that people could understand and also hopefully enjoy. Local Matters was really the foundation of, of what I learned, and, uh, you know, I can't thank them enough. Um, I guess if you'd told myself back then where I am today, you know, anchoring a newscast, I don't think I would have believed you, but with the help of Local Matters and you know many other jobs along the way, here I am, so I'm pretty surprised. I look at video now of when I was anchoring and it's funny to me because my, your voice changes. My voice was so high and I could tell I was very nervous. And, and once you look back at that and you see how far that you've grown, even me in just six years, I mean, hopefully I grow a lot more too, but I mean, you have to start somewhere. And starting in college at that level is so much better than starting your first job being that nervous and, and, and everything. I wanted to be in news and I knew that I needed some sort of on-air experience to get me into um, the business and so I was like well let's try local matters and see it was the, one of the only classes that offered some sort of television experience. As far as like the stories go I really like that you were able to do whatever topic that you felt was right for the show. Uh, of course you had to go through the producers in order to try to get them approved but I like that it was very lenient in the way that you got to choose your topics, uh, you were able to go out and do your own b-roll, you were able to choose your own shots, put it together, and pass it through onto the actual show. I felt like this is a piece of cake. I'll be able to, you know, uh, pick up my stories uh, and then create something from it. And then I realized uh, quickly that uh, it, it was a lot more work than I expected because you have to actually call real locations for your stories and you have to set up these schedules for um, with real people in the outside world, and it's not anything with school related. So even if you tell me you're a student, they're gonna you have to buy by, you have to abide by their schedule and by their rules. So I'd been editing for about ten years at the time that I took Local Matters, but what I didn't really have experience in is documentary filmmaking. I would just take a camera and just you know spray it around like it was a hose. But he taught us that, like no, you need to set it still on tripod. You need to get your interviews in one single shot and you need to just you know have total control of that because if you're not using a tripod if you're not you know fully engaged with your interview subject it's going to show in the final product you always have to have a backup plan you know you always have to have a plan b in case anything goes wrong in case you know something's missing or somebody cancels on you i was doing a hang gliding story and then the memory card ran out of memory and the sun was setting and i was trying to get everything all in like one shooting and then um, luckily the guy had a, a SD card in his truck 
and he let me borrow one. It takes a team to put everything together in the end. Um, you, you learn how to work with other people and different personalities, which is what it's like in the news business as well. There's going to be people who, are, who come from all different backgrounds and, and who deal with things differently, but you have to be able to adapt. I realize that there are people who don't necessarily want to be in news, and so those are obviously, dif it's difficult to work with people like that because um, you realize that you're going to have to pick up the slack. One person messes something up or doesn't know what they're doing, then it kind of, it's a domino effect, so then it kind of messes up what the other person is doing, and then it definitely tests your limits and shows you what you're capable of and how much you're able to handle. Uh, you're in charge of two stories uh, within a 10-week period, in addition to uh, doing shows once or twice a week, every week, then you kind of learn more about yourself and what you're able to handle. But it's simple things like that that actually come together and really make you the well-rounded person that you are as far as video production is. The really big thing that I took away from Local Matters is that no matter what job you have, whether it be in television or any other daily job, there are no small parts. Everybody has a crucial part to play in making something work. It's not what you know or who you know, but is somebody willing to work with you in this industry? Because that's how you would find, that's, that's the way you would get work. Because if like, if somebody I knew liked working with me, like I like working with Andy, I want to put him in another production because he was able to meet his deadlines. He was able to do exactly what I told him to do with, you know, with excellence and all that. That's what they want. They want they want the work, they want it done right, and they want to be able to work with you because they like you, because you actually have a, a professional demeanor. And that's what I took away from it, because at the, at the end of the day, Local Matters kind of becomes a family. I, it makes me feel proud, it really does, because, um, you know, when they're in the midst of it, then they're doing it, you don't really know if they're catching on or if they're, you know, you kind of want at a certain level to them enjoy it too, not just see all the stress and work. But I think they, um, I feel proud. I feel proud that what the work they do and they put together. And that's really all what I want them to get out of this course is the confidence um, to be able to produce a TV show. Because when you first come in here, it's like, this seems a little overwhelming, and it's like, how do we do this? And then after they do it, it's like, oh, you know, like I always say, it's like putting together IKEA furniture. The first one's tough, and the rest, it just gets easier and easier. So I like to be the first IKEA chair that you put together.